let's get into it. We're starting the chat right now about the Lions restoring the roar. Chris Billings just <laughs> told me the Lions are the best team in the NFC. We kind of got back and forth into it. I told him they wouldn't be favored over the Niners, but he's saying the Lions are built to handle the Eagles. <laughs> Tell me more. Yeah, me more. It's what I was saying. Like, I, I think in terms of, like, the way you're going to beat the Eagles right now is being out physical with them. Like, that's where they beat teams is in the trenches. And I think the Lions are very much built to do that. That's part of how they got their win over KC in the beginning of the season. So, I just... Lions continue to impress me, but I, I I agree. If they went up against the 49ers, it would be an issue for them. No. And then also, as I was just telling you guys before hitting that record button, was, yeah, the Lions have no experience in the postseason other than Jared <laughs> Goff. So, like, that that matters, too. Like, team that we've seen a lot of teams that get there, and they're hyped, and then they just they don't know what to do when they get there. It's what is your example of a team that's fallen flat like this? Oh man, like come on, you've seen it in the NFC for years now with teams that just have had these dramatic runs and yeah, like even if they get to the Super Bowl, like still just um like we've seen it happen with the Cardinals teams, we've seen it happen with yeah. the Panthers teams. Um what has I mean, impressed it, it, it's, you? It's about different the... because this 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 Lions team has one playoff win since what fifty seven. So it's hard to say that <laughs> what this team is doing because they're, I mean, they were close last year. They were within a game. So that's all know. that town. Uh, by the way, that's all that city wants is just win one playoff game, and this this whole season would be an overwhelming success for the Lions. Mm-hmm. And so oh. I, I I think if you're Dan Camel, you do have to put that in perspective. But, like, do you not think that weight kind of weighs on some of these players of, like, oh, we just need to win one for this city? I mean, they're, they have nothing to lose, though, because they're, they've never been expected of anything. And now they actually are playing well. If they were even just to get in the playoffs with, like, a higher seat, like, they win the division, I think that that city would be happy. Of course, they're definitely going to want that one playoff win. Like, you're I've just been, riding it right there, win. though, of just they win the division. They have a home playoff game, like sold out stadium, just roaring crowd. And like, we all know what's going to happen. The Lions are going to fall flat on their ass in that game. <laughs> I mean, I just would have to disagree with you and think that winning the division and having a home playoff game would be enough because I believe they did that with Matt Stafford. So I feel like when you you send him off, you, you're going to need to do more. And I think when they got was Brad Holmes, the GM from the Rams is now running things in Detroit. Part of the reason they got golf, like no. they have bigger plans in mind for this rebuild and this turnaround than just winning the division and like a playoff appearance. I know, but it's it's progress for them. They they were close last. They just don't want like be good one year and then be crap for the next fifteen years. They're trying to build a consistent team. At least that's I... what I took from it when I drove through Detroit. They were they were ha- they'd be happy with like a twelve and five record and winning the division. Perhaps I was pushing back on Billings and the Lions being favored against the Niners in an NFC neutral site game. Mm -hmm. But the question I would say, maybe to question myself, would be like, do you think that the Lions believe that they're the best team in the NFC? And that seems like the Dan Campbell, I guarantee, hasn't believed in that. They have no reason other than they they have a quarterback that's been to a Super Bowl. They have, if at least I can speak from my experience when the Dolphins had Dan Campbell. That entire team took on his personality, so I guarantee they believe they can win the, the win the actual NFC. It's tough, man. The Chiefs' win is their best win by far, and it was pretty lucky. I they mean, they are lo- going in the one right loss, direction. They lost in overtime to the Seahawks. I agree with you. They're going in the right direction, but other than that win, I'm not like they they had they did they did handle the Bucks. That was a pretty impressive win. They, that was pretty they beat dominating. The, they- they Without beat weapons, the, the Packers handedly in Lambeau. 
That's true. That's true. You're right. You're right. What were you going to say, Billings? Up the Bucks. Let's be honest. And like they the Bucks did. are a good defense. Like they are a good team. I realize everyone wants to kick the Bucks to the curb now that they lost the Lions and had their stadium overtaken by Lions fans. But that was a big win for the Lions, and that's why, like, I have to like now when I look at power rankings. I have to consider the Lions now as like, no, like you're a real threat to the NFC. You know what? I th- it, I was really impressed with Jared Goff last game because the Lions didn't have as many. I don't think that he has as good of weapons as the other um, quarterbacks in the NFC. I think like Amon Ross St. Brown is good. He's like a good receiver, but he's not he a, like a number. End. Yeah, Laporte is a rookie, though. I mean, he's good, but they're not like it's not like that's AJ Brown, that's CD Lamb, that's Christian McCaffrey. They're not in that Mm -hmm. level of weaponry. I don't know, man. Like, I think honestly, Amon Ross St. Brown is in that conversation. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think he's even close. What was the running back they drafted high as well? Plus, they already have they traded for someone. They traded for David Montgomery. Yeah. They, and... they they drafted Jameer Gibbs. But I did like none of those like Jared Goff has played better than I thought he would. Cause I don't think the supporting cast that he has in the Detroit is as good as the one that he had with the Rams and McVay. And I don't think this supporting cast is as talented as these other teams like Dallas or San Francisco or Philly. Like the other quarterbacks have much better supporting casts. Like maybe Goff has a better line. I think in LA the... he had an old an old an old declining running back and an old declining receiver. Yeah. Todd Gurley won offensive player of the year when Jared Goff was there. And Cooper Cup was in his prime and they went to the Super Bowl because of Todd Gurley, not because of Jared Goff. They probably Goff. lost that Super Bowl because of Todd Gurley as well. <laughs> I mean, I would say Jared Goff was probably having a hand in that as well. They put up three points. I mean, let, let's not say that this is all Todd Gurley. He, he was doesn't just throw... beginning his career, though. I, I mean, yes and no, but, like, I agree. But there's a reason why the Rams and Sean McVay, who everyone agrees knows quarterback play, stapled, Sean Mc... stapled Goff along with some picks to Detroit to get Matt Stafford. There's a reason he made that decision. So, I mean, I I think that Jared Goff has improved a lot as a quarterback, and that's something maybe we didn't see. Because, like I said, I don't think the weapons in Detroit are that good. I think that, I don't think they're that good you at all. You just called I think it right more... there. McVay didn't have the patience to develop Goff. We don't know because we don't know if Goff will ever get there. That's the hope that Detroit is I think is he kind of has on. with the I, Lions. I, you guys were talking about him the end of last year. That Would you want Jared Goff as your starting quarterback? And you look back at his numbers for the end of last year and then what he's doing so far this year? But is he any I better? Him. I don't is think he... I ever saw Stafford play for a Lions team that looked this good. That's Even with Megatron in the, line, in the yeah. lineup. I don't think I've ever seen him look this good. That's just that's just recency bias. The, the they were good. No, the, the Packers were, were never scared of them. The, like Bears, no. Vikings were never scared of them. Nobody was ever scared of the Lions. This year, it's a completely different story. That is just like recency bias. Nadama Kongsu, Calvin Johnson. They had they won like eleven or twelve games. Like they were there in the NFC playoffs. If the will you be surprised if you just said the Lions are going to fall flat on their face in the first playoff game, and that's exactly what they did with Matt Stafford. So how are they any different than when they had Matt? Than they, when they had Calvin Johnson, Nadama Kongsu, and Matt Stafford. How are they any different? Because the like on paper they should have had a better team, but I'm telling you with my eyes it wasn't. <laughs> in your eyes, that team lost in the playoffs to the Cowboys and Tony Romo. This Detroit Lions team could go to the playoffs and lose to the Cowboys, and Dak Prescott in the playoffs the exact same way, and it wouldn't be that different. It wouldn't be that surprising. So like, uh, what? Look at Nick. Nick's like, yeah. yeah I mean, right. I, I once you made that comparison, I, it sort of does, but. You're swaying me a little bit, Tony, but the lines are still good this year. I agree with you, but we I don't think that they've restored the roar completely and they're the favorite in the NFC. I think that you would have to I wouldn't to say see they're them. the favorite, but I think they're definitely top three, four team in the NFC. I think you have to see them beat one of those teams. San Fran, Eagles, Dallas. You see them beat one of those teams, then you're like, okay, we can have this conversation. They Why lost to Seattle. The Seattle's win, though. 
but because Kadarius Tony had fucking five drops and it was like the worst game by a wide receiver in five years. Like, and it was a game they won by one point. So, I mean, it's that one, it's, it's tough. I want to see the Lions beat one of those NFC contenders. But we all, like, as people that watch football, like, Lions lose that game 999 times out of 1,000. I agree with you. I agree with you. All I said is the Lions are on their way. I want to see them beat one of those NFC contending teams before I'm like, you're in this class. Like, to me, they're right there with Seattle. They're on the outside looking in. And I'm like, yeah, you guys, you'll lose to all three of these teams if you play them. Like, you're just not there yet. But they they look so promising. I'm going to flip this twisted game on you then. If the Eagles beat the Dolphins this week, are they one? Are they the best team in the NFL? No, no. I think that'll be a great win. I agree. No, I think it'll be a great win. I think that we're all. I, 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 I would hate that. I think <laughs> that we're all then, this... then the then the whole talk is going to be: Are the Dolphins even good? I would hate that that they can't <laughs> okay, show up so against I'm big teams. Flipping it some more. John Kerry style, as Tony says. <laughs> um, if the Dolphins beat the Eagles, are they the best team in the NFL? I think people will actually start giving them a little bit of respect. Not saying think... that Tua just throws it two yards to Tyreek and he just goes. <laughs> I think they'll be in that combo, but it's probably going to be the Niners that's still the best team in the league. I mean, I don't want to give Purdy credit, but he didn't have Debo Samuel or Christian McCaffrey, and he drove the ball down the field for them to kick that field goal. Kicker makes that field goal. We're not having this discussion. He did make two. He did miss two in that game. I understand for Jalen Hurts and the Eagles that their kicker missed a chip shot in that game too. It happens. But I feel like like getting to that, the San Francisco, San Fr- the San Francisco Philly losses were like totally different, in my opinion, because like we've said, Philly's been winning these games. But they have not looked the same as last year. Mm-hmm. They won that game against Washington. They probably should have lost. So this felt like it was just like this was coming for them. Nick mm-hmm. somehow called it. I don't know what kind of voodoo you have with Jets fans or with Jets logic. <laughs> that was wild. I was in shock when that happened. But like we've been waiting for this Philly downfall for a while. It just doesn't look like they have all their ducks in a row like last year. Like they're just winning games on talent, not like because they're like the better team and have schemed up a good game plan. Where San Francisco, that was just like perfect storm, field yeah. goals missing, ugly weather, injured players. It's not like the Browns were good. I just don't get why the Niners are get they get those those outs, those excuses this week. And I've seen it across the media where it's like, no, nah, we'll give that one to the Niners. Like they're still like the the best team in it, the league. It, it's and because it, it's because they had injuries and because it's Brock Purdy's first loss in the regular season. Nobody's That's talking why they about get how they buy. played a third string QB though. Like, yeah. I don't, I have not seen that anywhere. In the, the, the national media national pushes media whatever talk. narrative they want to. Like, yes, I, I see that like the, the Browns defense is finally getting some credit. Also mm-hmm. clip boy Anyways, I'm picking the Niners, but I will say this, it's going to be a little bit of a matrix to game for Brock Purdy and that Niners offense. Um, even though the Browns had some struggles against the Ravens, like their defense is still playing downright stingy, allowing less than 200 yards a game. Um, said that that it would be a test for Purdy, and it was. But yeah, I just I don't I don't understand why the Eagles and the Niners are getting some just weird outs this week by the national media, whereas like goddamn like Tony's team if. Dak Prescott has three interceptions. Like you'd think like you'd think the world was on fire and that like World War Three was about to start. But like Jalen Hurts does it and it's crickets this week. They're still the best team. Oh, still got the brotherly shove. I just it's a it's a weird dynamic to me. And so I, I think that like you have to hold these teams like equally accountable. Like mm-hmm. we did it with the Dolphins of just like and we did it with the Cowboys too, right. of just like you right. came out and shit the bed, or like exactly. Dolphins, like that's a game against the Bills, like they you shouldn't have had. Ass. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the Bills wanted that game more. Damn it, I don't want you to be wrong about this, Billings, but you are, and this is why. 
My Cowboys, they don't deserve the benefit of the doubt. And unfortunately, I think the Niners and the Eagles get the benefit of the doubt in this situation because they've proven over the past several years that they're much better organizations and they bounce back and they win playoff games. And these could just be blips. And these other teams, it's not just a blip for them. And I get that. I get giving them credit for their resume. But then don't just use the any given Sunday excuse Okay. But then that's fair. then rip into the Cowboys like they're the most inept dumbass team in the league when it's like, no, they are they're one of the top teams in the NFC. Like, mm-hmm. I'm I'm sorry. And that's fair. That's and fair. So many I mean, people wanted to write that oh defense was frauds, Dak Prescott's a fraud, blah, blah, blah. And it's like I don't hear that criticism for Kirk Cousins and the Vikings right now. I mean you're you're not wrong on that. To be fair, and that they is have true. the resume, they have the mm-hmm. expectations. What I was noticing, maybe Nick will give me a better um, answer on this, but for some reason, it feels like the Bills are like the Bizarro Cowboys. That's the same they, team. <laughs> That's the same team. Dak Prescott and Josh Allen are the same quarterback. Anything that you want to have said about the Cowboys, it's good. They'll say it about the Bills. Anything that's that's bad that they want to say about the Bills, they'll just say it about the Cowboys. That well, is, li- they are like they're so similar. It's ridiculous. Like yes. oversized expectations. Like they make their quarterbacks play hero football most mm-hmm. of the time. And then they, they just, they just slander their quarterbacks when they're not able to overcome like ridiculous odds. It's, it's, yeah. I don't know. That, that was just a similarity. I was like, this is the same fucking team. I, I agree with you. Now that now you're saying that it, it makes complete sense. And they're both sitting there at four and two. They both won some big games by big scores. And they've both shit the bed when they, <laughs> They shit the bed in big games too. The Bills shit the bed in big games. No, that's what I'm saying. They both did. Yeah. Yeah. They both have that pattern of doing that. They both. And I was like, this is bizarro Cowboys. I just, I don't, I don't like that. Like the media finds like they're, they're people they need to like pick on for just, and and two is one of them. I don't hear that noise for Herbert today after Monday night football. Mm, I seem like it's building. I feel like it's, it's building. Starting. It's, it's building. Starting but right had now. Tua had that game? Mm-hmm. Had Tua had that game with the over again? Like national media would have been set on fire. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And I, I feel like they tried to get to some of it last year with some of that social media quarterback branding thing with with mm-hmm. Justin Herbert. But he, but then definitely Tua shit the bed Sunday game. night against Herbert. Yeah. Well, honestly, so, like. The only reason it continued to be a discussion last season was because Tua got injured. Like this, that com- that Tua Herbert conversation should have been squashed last year. And it, it's funny how like that conversation's completely trailed off to where like all the people that were fucking talking about it weekly mm-hmm. were suddenly silent about it. And so I just, I, I, yes, I get that we all have favorites, but. Like, treat the winners just like you would treat the losers in some of these yeah. discussions. And no, that's, I, that's I feel well like said. we that's try to point. do that at least fairly of just, like, we will call a spade a spade when it needs to be. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And if, calling a spade a spade, let's talk about... <sighs> Are the Bengals back? Are the Bengals back? I'll go with you first, Nick. Are the Bengals back? How do you feel about that win over Seattle? I mean, Joe Burrow's getting healthy now, but are they completely back? They're they're still in a tough division because they still got to play the Ravens. They still got to play that Browns defense. And every once in a while, Pittsburgh comes alive and can put it together on both sides of the ball. They have all the weapons. So... I think they will compete for a playoff spot, but I don't think they're winning that division. Billings? I don't think they're going to win that division, but I I tried to tell you this a couple weeks ago where I was like, don't write off the Bengals. We did this exact same thing the last couple years, and they're doing the same thing of just like they started out horribly out of the gate, Mm -hmm. and they're slowly starting to show signs of life and have some pretty quality wins. And honestly, the AFC is pretty open. 
It really is. Like they could very much back into this a wild card easily because mm -hmm. the field is is pretty well even at this point in the AFC. So I I could easily see the Bengals back in the playoffs and your prediction blowing up in your face, Tony. It's looking that way. To me, the thing that I took away from that game was that game, the Bengals should not have won that game. That game should... was more no. that game was more about Geno Smith than that game was about Joe Burrow. And I felt like I was just like, man, this is really painful to watch. If you're a Seahawks fan, that Seahawks offense was was bad. They were bad. The the Bengals scored three points after halftime and they punted the ball like four times. So it's not like Joe Burrow was doing anything in that second yeah. half. Um it's going to be close, man. It's going to be close. I could be wrong with that. Joe Burrow's starting to look healthier, but the defense is really what impressed me the most. They really shut down Geno Smith and that Seahawks offense. They have already lost to the Browns, Nick, and the Steelers. So, or no, Browns and or Steelers and Ravens. They haven't played the okay. Browns. Right. You're right. You're right. So we'll see. I don't know if you have – Bengals-Jets is still a pretty close matchup, if you ask me. As crazy as that sounds, those are still pretty close teams, and they have the same record. And I try to yeah. say the Jets have a chance at the playoffs. Billings wrote that off. He's probably right because I think the Texans are probably – Honestly, I'm second-guessing that after this. Game. I know. I think I would – I just – something's going to fall apart for them, man. You just you're, know it is. Think. You would think. <laughs> man. But they, like – and like, oh, it's just the attitude they have around these wins that just mm -hmm. drives me bonkers. Like, I want to punch Robert Sala in the face. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't advise that. He's probably a lot bigger. Oh, than he you. would murder me. He would, <laughs> he would snap me in half. Um, uh, honestly, like Zach Wilson would probably snap me in half. <laughs> like, if we're being honest here. But yeah, like the Jets. I, I keep riding off like Aaron Rodgers isn't coming back, but if they oh. can kind of keep doing what they've been doing and say they're in playoff contention still in week 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not so sure. Like no. <laughs> I would highly advise against it if I were the jets or Aaron Rodgers of just like, Nope, that's a terrible idea. Like do not be coming back to like full, like, you know, NFL speed at the tail end of the season leading into the playoffs. Like that's just, it's a recipe for disaster. But now I'm, it could I'm have second them. guessing so much about the jets. Man. I know that defense, win, man. defense win. is really good. And Zach Wilson has become a game manager. He's not trying to do too much. They're He's minimizing relying on his run mistakes. game and his defense. And yeah, that's but where you're the not season gonna... turned for him last year was they lost Brees Hall. And so, yeah, having like Brees Hall in that lineup is huge for him, I think, in terms of just like, oh, yeah, we don't have to rely on Zach Wilson to do everything. Uh, all right, correct me. All right, Stat Boy, Clip Boy, correct me if I'm wrong. Weren't the Jets like seven and three last season? And they ended up before, nine and seven. So yeah, before I they mean, fell apart. I mean, that's a pretty drastic fall. So I mean, they they do have those wins where they they are resilient and they overcome crap. But I mean, what the Cowboys kicked the shit out of them. Again, that win doesn't get talked about at all. Nobody's talking about that today. No one's talking about that. That Jets lot. They they got smashed. Like that Jets team. Like they if Jalen Hurts doesn't throw that if he doesn't throw that last interception, the Jets lose that game. Like he, they just lose that game. They can't score touchdowns. They kick field yeah. goals too much. The deep, like Brees Hall is good. He's really fucking good. But if you can't beat teams passing the ball, like you're not going to. And I just, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like flipped. I'm where you were two weeks ago, man. I'm just selling that jet stock. I like more of these other teams. Like I, the Browns dude, the Browns are going to be in that goddamn playoff mix with that defense. Mm -hmm. And I like that defense a heck of a lot more than the jets right now. So definitely probably. Yeah. Let's go into it right now. Biggest surprise. One third of the way through the season, man, other than that Browns defense, what would you say the biggest surprise for you is? We'll start with you, Nick. Oh God. I don't know. Biggest surprise. 
honestly, what we were just talking about, the Jets are still at 500 with Zach Wilson because I remember a lot of people saying how daunting that first six game stretch was, even with Aaron Rodgers, that they'd be happy if they went like two and four. Yeah. So I guess maybe that the way that the Jets defense and Zach Wilson has been able to keep them alive because they were my loser of the week two weeks in a row. Yeah. Start the season. I remember. Billings, biggest surprise. Man, honestly, like we I mean, we've talked about, it, like the Texans is definitely a surprise. Um also the Vikings, man. I guess that yeah. would be the dis- biggest Yeah, that, that would probably be the biggest disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> like uh and so many people saw it. They're like there's there's no way the Vikings can be that good two seasons in a row. Like they had a rabbit's foot shoved up their ass last season. And I was like, "No, like Kirk Cousins is good. Justin Jefferson's good, and they are. I just don't know about the rest of the team <laughs> or the coaching necessarily." Um so yeah, I I I would go with Texans as my biggest surprise of the season. Like nobody expected that from. They thought no. we talked about how they were probably going to be a number one contender for the the number mm-hmm. one pick. Um, no, my God, I wish I could be the Texans right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got Rams, man. Rams, bro. I wrote them off. Thought they were not going to be anything this year. No. Matt Stafford is playing his. He's playing lights out this season. Him and McVay are really Puka Nakua. Like they're that's the biggest surprise for me, man. I thought they were done. I was like, this, they're going to be in the Caleb Williams combo. They don't want to play no more. Like they're done. Credit card bill came due. So wrong. Rams offense, but yeah, I think we all are, all are in agreement with the biggest disappointment being the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Gosh, man, I can't believe it, man. Kirk Cousins not waving that trade clause either. That no yeah. trade clause, so he's going to be stuck there. Yeah, if Do I had to go with another one, I'd probably say the Steelers because we expected a bigger jump out of uh, Kenny Pickett in the second year. That That's a good one. But that much like the one. Jets, they're hanging around. They are. <laughs> these are, what, three and two? Yeah. So I, it's I not really that how, much of a disappointment. All right. Who is the best team in the NFC South? Billings. It's not the Panthers. Yeah, it's definitely not the Panthers. It's definitely not the Panthers. <laughs> it's not, the definitely not the Saints. Um, like I'd, I'd still have to give it to the Bucks at this point. Okay, you were yeah. drinking some Falcons Kool Aid last week. I was, I and then check. of course, the second I start drinking the Falcons Kool Aid, <laughs> they fuck it up. But yeah. yeah, I'd say the Bucks. Um, like the the Falcons are still going through some things. They're going mm-hmm. through some growing pains. Panthers, we said it previous episode. I don't even know if they're gonna win a game this season. <laughs> Saints, no identity to that team. Dear God, like I, I, it. We're at week seven, and I hate watching Saints games. I can tell you that with like just a hundred percent. It's just so confusing. Of I hate watching these Saints games. They make my eyes bleed. Uh, so yeah, Bucks. Yeah, I'd have to agree, Nick. I agree. agree. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's that's family agreement right there. Speaking of watching games that make your eyes bleed, I can't do it with the Falcons and Desmond Ritter anymore. Jesus Christ. Every Falcons game is the exact same. Comes down to the last five minutes, and either they make some bullshit play or they don't, and then they're going to win or they're going to lose. Like He... They had 400 fucking yards of total offense last week, like over 100 more yards than the Commanders, and they could not score any points against the Commanders. The Commanders. I was just like, Jesus, man. Hey, Commanders, it, man. though, that's another cockroach team where it's just like, hey, oh, Sam Hell's been playing well, which I'll, I'll get to in our Pick'em's episode. <laughs> he is. He uh, is. You're right. He's better than I thought he would, man. I just can't do it with the Falcons. So but I'm Falcons, all in on Baker and the like, Bucks with you guys. Like today, if you're asking me to buy stock in the future of the Falcons, like I'll buy it right now. I do see them mm-hmm. eventually trending upward. Like this season, it will be grow- growing pains. But like yeah. next season, I'd be totally on board with Falcons winning this division. I have a question for you right now. All of us can answer this question. Who's a better quarterback, Zach Wilson or Desmond Ritter? I haven't watched Desmond Ritter play enough. 
So it's yeah. Zach Wilson. Make- You're going Zach Wilson too, huh? That's wild, Nick. I can't, I, 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 I can't make that call right now. <laughs> no, Billings? I would have to go Desmond Ritter. Um, okay. Like, I've seen enough out of Zach Wilson that I don't I don't see any height in that ceiling. <laughs> um, whereas Desmond Ritter, like, I think you can correct some of these mistakes, minimize some of them through play calls and scheming. Um so yeah, I would go Desmond Ritter. I've seen enough out of Zach Wilson that, like, I think you're a glorified backup QB. I mean, give me that backup QB. I've seen too much out of Desmond Ritter. He's got great skill players and a fantastic run game, and he's just not getting it done. So I'm just like, ah, maybe he progresses and gets better. I'm just not seeing it. His first season, stay calm. No, it's not. He started last season, oh, like true. halfway through we the always, year. Oh, man, we always <laughs> Fuck that mm-hmm. up with him. Remember, quarterback. That's true. That's right. Mariota, quarterback. Yep. Netflix. Watch that. Great show, guys. <laughs> still Great still show. waiting for Great him show. to get back to the Falcons camp. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what was said in that conversation. Just left and never no. came back. <laughs> like a dad getting cigarettes. <laughs> Oh, Arthur Smith, we want to know what was in that convo. We want to know what was said. Was it even a convo? Um, other than that, I don't know if we've got anything else. Got anything else you want to get to in this week six recap? But before we get to anything else, Nick, <sighs> Billings? Nah. Bad week of football. I just, ugh. <laughs> Good week for the sports books. Good week for the yeah. sports books. Let me tell you, man. Hey, I had fun. All of us. There you go. There you go. Well, that was the week six recap. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy, subscribe, comment, follow, share. Please make sure to tune into the rest of our videos. I'm Tony Parlay. That's Chris Billings. And that's Nicholas Kerr down there. Nickopedia. Listen to him. Thanks for watching the Sports Buds. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe.